وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول question I asked. I am intending to get married soon, but I am still a student and I work in my free time. Can you give me some advice on combining between marriage and seeking Islamic knowledge, mainly Quran memorization? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih, nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Combining between marriage and seeking knowledge. I think it's really important to understand the ruling of seeking knowledge and the ruling of getting married, and then the ruling of combining the two together. So let's first of all talk about the ruling of seeking knowledge. There are two types of seeking knowledge. There is an essential knowledge that every Muslim must have, what some of the scholars, they call ilm al the knowledge of the situation that you're in right now, that you should know, for example, the basics of Islam, the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of Iman, if you're a parent, you know how to raise your children. If you're a husband, you know how to treat your wife. And the essential knowledge that every Muslim must have. And then there is voluntary knowledge, which goes beyond that. And that knowledge is mustahab. It's highly recommended. And it's something which has huge numbers of virtues attached to it. In terms of marriage, the general ruling of marriage is that it is also mustahab in a general sense. It's recommended. However, it may become wajib upon a person if a person fears that they will not be able to stay within the limits set by Allah unless they were to get married. So there's no doubt that a person has to balance between these two issues and they have to look at themselves. So some people, they say, I don't feel that there is a strong uh, push or urge for me to get married. I feel that I can stay within the limits set by Allah with the help of fasting, for example. And I feel that I want to give more of my time to the more important of the tombs to have that here, which is the issue of seeking knowledge, voluntary knowledge. There may be a person who says, I don't feel like I have the obligatory knowledge and that has to take precedence over the voluntary issue of marriage. And so they, they, they put it in that order. There could be a person who says, I feel that I can't stay within the limits set by Allah. Uh, and so I feel the need to get married. There might be someone who says that I have not reached that level, but there's a good proposal for me. So I want to get married at this time. Allah has blessed me with a good opportunity to get married at this time. So when a person decides to join between these two things, it's really, really important that you bear in mind the general principle that was mentioned in the hadith of uh, Salman al-Farisi, the hadith of Abu Darda and Salman al-Farisi, in which Salman said to Abu Darda, فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقٍ Give everyone who has a right over you their right. So your spouse is going to have a right over you, rights over you. We took from you a heavy oath. It's a heavy burden to be married. Those women, they took a heavy covenant from you. It's a big, big thing. Women have rights similar to the rights that are over them. It's big, it's a big deal. You have to give those rights. And there's no good saying, I'm not giving you your rights because I'm seeking knowledge. Because there's, what did you seek the knowledge for? Then? You sought the knowledge to get near to Allah. You sought the knowledge to worship Allah. If you sought the knowledge to worship Allah and to get near to Allah, then ultimately you have to practice that knowledge. So you can't be taken away from the rights of your family. At the same time, you should set reasonable expectations that you are going to be dedicating a portion of your time as much as possible to seeking that knowledge and to benefiting for yourself uh, in the sight of Allah and also to help you to fulfill your responsibility towards your family. Because part of the responsibility towards the family, as the, if, if we're talking about a, a man who is the head of the household, then the man who is the head of the household for sure needs to have the knowledge to take those decisions 
to make the right decisions. And the woman who's responsible for the, those things in the household, she needs to have knowledge to take the right decisions. So it's about bringing the spouse on that journey uh, with you. It's about making sure that, that you both have reasonable expectations. It's about making sure that you're both giving each other their your rights and you're not taking it away in the guise of knowledge. And it's also about making sure that all of your free time is taken up with as much seeking knowledge as possible. Because as the famous saying goes, that if you give knowledge all of you, it will give you a part of it. And if you give knowledge a part of you, it will not give you anything at all. That's what Allah Azza wa easy for me to mention, and Allah was best. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.